Yeah, um, thanks very much, Chair, and thanks for the opportunity once again to, to speak to the committee. Uh, the issue of the treatment of people with ME is one which I have raised before. I first became aware of this issue actually during my election campaign in 2015, but I knew absolutely nothing about it and did not know really how I, as a Member of Parliament, could affect any change. However, I then met with a constituent in January of this year who um, told me about something called the PACE trial. And the PACE trial is a piece of research that was done, fairly controversial research um, that was done that recommended the best treatment for people with ME was something called graded exercise therapy. The ME community from the start have argued that this treatment not only is it not effective, but it's actually extremely damaging. And people who have undertaken graded exercise therapy have um, ended up far worse than they did to start with. Now, um, it's important that we get this debate. We, we've already had two debates this year. We started with a 30-minute Westminster Hall debate. Many members attended, but obviously could just make short interventions. We then had a longer Westminster Hall debate in June, where 30 members spoke during the three hours. So there is great cross-party interest in this particular issue. Um, the time is important. NICE are currently updating their guideline, guidelines for the treatment of ME. Um, and this is as a result of pressure that the ME community have put on them because of their current recommendations of graded exercise therapy. But there's concern that graded exercise therapy will remain because over 60% of the panel, it's called the Guideline <coughs> Development Group, um, over 60% of these members are actually supporters of PACE. So it calls into question really the, um, the, the independence of this particular uh, review of current treatments. Um, also, we have, we have situations where if people are treated well by a GP, with a GP who has knowledge and understanding of the condition, they are made, able to manage their condition and, in some cases, make decent recovery. Uh, so they are able to function to a certain extent and some of them to a fairly good extent. If the treatment is wrong, however, they can be bedbound for many, many years. This is a, an impact not just in the person themselves, but in their family and the economy. Um, so we need to get this right. So it's important that GPs have an understanding of this. Um, but there's one other sinister aspect of this that I do want to highlight, and I think it's important that we do highlight within the chamber, is um, the issue of children with ME. Now, ME in itself is a horrendous enough condition, but some of these families are then um, been subjected to child protection um, prosecutions because it's considered that the parents themselves are causing the harm to the children. So they've been threatened with, been removed from their parents, social worker involved. So what is, is a terrible condition affecting them physically in every aspect <coughs> of their lives also becomes a mentally traumatic condition. So really the time is right. We need to get this debated. We need to get really start putting pressure on both NICE and the medical community to get the treatment right for this condition. Anyone else, please? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, just want to say a couple of, of things. Um, you know, Carol set it out very well. And I think, you know, with the support of the Backbench Business Committee, we came before you uh, previously to ask for the longer debate in Westminster Hall, uh, which, as you've heard, was very well uh, supported. Um, I think at the time we had a debate about whether there could be a substantive motion. Um, and at that point, uh, it was felt that actually just to get the issues out there to be explored for members to be able to speak up on behalf of constituents was the right thing to do. But I think there is now a proposal for us to have a substantive uh, motion. Um, and the other point that I uh, made, when I mean, Carol's talked about the, the NICE uh, Guideline Development Committee, um, I think when I came before, um, I talked about the fact that this is the House of Commons at its best in terms of uh, working cross-party to highlight an issue which has been much um, 
undersung, not necessarily debated publicly for many, many years. And what was fascinating from the last debate was just how widely reported and um, uh, tweeted upon everything else. I am sure other members had emails from around the world uh, just for the fact that we've been here presenting to the, uh, the committee. You know, this is something where actually, um, particularly in relation to these nice guidelines, we as members of this House can give people who often don't get heard a voice against what can be a very powerful medical community. And I hope that the committee uh, will therefore want to uh, give us this, this time and substantive motion to be able to you know, enable members to do that on behalf of constituents. Mr Kelvin. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to add my, my support to <coughs> everything that's been said, but I've got a particular interest because I've had family members, not immediate family members, who are long-term sufferers from ME, um, and, I was, uh, and the failure of the medical profession to diagnose and treat properly. Um, so over many, many years that was the case. I've had constituents with similar problems, one in particular who has suffered very, very badly indeed. But uh, probably more relevant to us is that Dr Ian Gibson, former Member of Parliament from one of the Norwich seats or from your party, our party. Um, he he um, has been advising me and he's absolutely incandescent about pace and the terrible damage it's done. And he is an expert witness and has advised me. I've put in a number of written questions on about pace as well in the past. So I've got a specific interest. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you very, very much, Lynn. Thank you for hearing us again. I think the disability of ME is one which doubly disadvantages people. On the one hand, it's an invisible disability. On the other hand, it's a denied disability. And I think if there's one thing that I drew enormous pleasure from following the last couple of debates, it was the number of people who, as Nicky Morgan has said, from around the world, who got in touch with us and said, at last, somebody's listening to us. We're in a position where we need to do more than just ventilate, and more than just actually adumbrate on the particular circumstances, but intervene, I think, in what appears to be a remorseless rolling rockfall which at the present time is liable to, to crush many of our constituents. I'm not going to criticise the medical profession. It's not my place to do so, and I can't do so. But it seems to me that what we have here is an unequal contest. We have, there is almost, not near unanimity, there's a very high number of people who suffer from myalgic encephalomyelitis who are <coughs> deeply, deeply concerned about this current form of treatment. We all know that medics have got it wrong in the past. What have we got to lose? by ventilating this one more time, as widely as possible, because this is something that if we don't get this right, then the consequences, particularly for paediatric ME sufferers, can be absolutely disastrous. So you see um, three and a half parties represented here, um, and we have attracted an enormous number of people. But I, th I think really and truly, Mr. Mearns, the people that I'd like to be addressing today are those in, around the world who for years have suffered their disability being denied. And they look to us, as Nicky Morgan said so brilliantly and so eloquently, to actually speak for them. And I know all of us would be extremely grateful for the opportunity to do so. Thank you. And you thank you very much indeed. Questions, please, Bob. Yes, uh, just very briefly, um, you mentioned that NICE are up updating the guidelines. Have you got a, a, any deadline or time frame for when they will be reporting and therefore potentially leading to the the, the timeliness of the debate? Um, they're certainly looking at it just now. The panel has been put together at the moment. So it's, it's happening as we speak, but in terms of a deadline, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Okay. 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 Anyone else, please? Um, I, I, I noticed that the, um, that the application is supported by uh, 30 or so members of Parliament. Uh, so that's you know, uh, very heartening, and, it, and it's timely. And, uh, and you know, it's a, it's a problem that I've been aware of for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's it, 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 it is a, a sort of the, the sort of issue that the backbench business committee was created to air. So so thank you very much for the application. If anyone's got the influence with the leader of the houses department, we do need some time to allocate. So um, <laughs> you know, so um, 